Hello, I'm Pat Kalaney with the Yamaha Professional Audio Division, and I'm here to tell you about the SWP-1, our new line of Ethernet switches designed specifically for Dante Audio Networks. To start this off on the right foot, we'll begin with some historical perspective and big picture concepts. We'll briefly review Yamaha's history with Dante. We'll explain how Yamaha gained the experience to build such a mature network switch, and I'll offer some perspective on why a dedicated product like this is a better alternative to off-the-shelf switches for audio networks. With the big picture properly framed, we can dive into several demonstrations of SWP1 advantages. So, there's our outline. Let's kick this off with a historical look at Yamaha's experience with Dante. In 2008, Yamaha announced a 16-channel MY card that could be inserted into most of our products of the time. Instantly, we were able to form useful Dante production systems. By 2012, products like the CL console and R-Series stage boxes had Dante built in. The network naturally acted as a snake and digital splitter. This brought complex projects within budget and delivered flexibility that previously was unheard of. Of course, Yamaha makes more than just digital mixers. We extended Dante into every aspect of professional audio, from the stage to recording, broadcast, and distributed audio. Today, we can link everything with a Dante network. And Dante is not an exclusive club reserved for high-end systems. You can link our affordable TF consoles with our flagship Rivage PM10 on the same network. This kind of reach and scalability is truly unprecedented in our industry. And now, Yamaha is taking the network itself to the next level with the SWP1 Ethernet switch. Hmm. Taking the network itself to the next level. Now there's a lofty goal. So where did Yamaha Pro Audio get the theoretical knowledge and practical experience to deliver a full-featured, reliable network switch? The R&D alone would bankrupt most companies in the pro audio space. Well, the Yamaha Pro Audio Division had some help from the Yamaha Sound Networks Division. That's right, Yamaha has a division that makes network switches, and they've been doing it for quite some time. Better yet, we're not far-flung subsidiaries lost in a conglomerate. The relationship is much closer than you might believe. It's easy to see how Yamaha's innovative technology is leveraged from one product to another in the music and pro audio industries. But Yamaha also makes chips for others. Yamaha's path to networks really began when our chips were used in fax modems. As ISDN and internet connections grew in popularity, Yamaha went from making components to making finished products. That spawned a series of solutions over the next 20 years at the SMB and enterprise level. Now, Yamaha's network products are primarily sold in Japan, where they're a major supplier of business-grade solutions. Just a few years ago, Yamaha Pro Audio, in Japan, began pairing Yamaha's off-the-shelf network switches with Dante systems, and those switches have performed flawlessly. Bottom line, the Yamaha Sound Networks division knows how to make a mature and reliable network switch. The Yamaha Professional Audio Division feels incredibly fortunate to have such a talented group of engineers in-house for such close collaboration. Now, to understand why Yamaha took on the task of creating a network switch specifically for the production world, let's discuss an age-old trend in technology circles called convergence. Convergence is this idea that separate industries gravitate towards common technology platforms, and that often implies an IT-centric focus. So examples of convergence are things like phones, going from analog POTS lines to voice over IP. In our industry, tape-based multitracks became digital audio workstations. And our conversation today is about transitioning from point-to-point -point digital interconnects, like Lightpipe, AES-EBU, and MADI, we're going to take all of that and replace it with a Dante networked infrastructure. Now, here's a key concept in discussing convergence. The fact that two industries choose the same technology doesn't mean they want the same finished product. Now, to illustrate this point, let's step away from networks for just a moment and talk about another technology that we're all very familiar with. Suppose someone was to ask for a recommendation on a computer. What would you do? 
Well, hopefully you'd ask them, what do you plan to do with that computer? Let's look at three common applications. A cubicle worker, a server, and a digital audio workstation. In each case, there's a lot of common components, but the form factor is completely different, and with good reason. Let's take that a step further. Something as fundamental as the operating system could be completely different. Now on paper, I could take any of these machines and use them in the other applications, but their fit might not be appropriate. For instance, if I take that file server and try to use it in the office or in the studio, the noise from the cooling fans would probably be objectionable. If I take that office machine and use it as a file server, I probably wouldn't be able to support many remote users. And if I put it in the studio, I might only get 32 tracks, a few DSP effects, and probably at high latency. So the point is, if you know the application in advance, you might design a different solution. And that's what the SWP-1 is all about. We believe the SWP-1 is more appropriate for the environment that it's going to be used in, for the technology it's going to connect to, and for the people who are going to be using it. So what did we do to make the SWP-1 better? First, we streamlined the setup and optimization process. You know, optimizing a network switch for Dante isn't difficult. Neither is zeroing a mixing console. But done manually, that's a tedious task. Now in the mixing console, we solve this with a snapshot, or a scene. Recall the scene, and you're brought back to a known starting point. Now we've applied the same concept to a network switch. Throw a dip switch on the front of the SWP-1, and you're automatically optimized for Dante. Done. Now to put this in perspective, I filmed myself setting up a pair of Yamaha SWP-1s and a pair of Cisco SG-300s. I've put the videos side by side just for comparison. Now hold it right there. Nine seconds in, I've thrown the dip switches on the SWP-1s and they're optimized for Dante. Plug in your power cords and walk away. You'll have a high capacity Dante network waiting for you. Now let's fast forward through the rest of the configuration. The Yamaha switch is easily initialized by holding the front panel button while power is applied. A rental house might do this to clear out administrative passwords or other settings that a customer might have set. The Yamaha Audio Network Monitor application has automatically discovered the devices and will start making the rest of our settings. These settings are pretty common for an installed system. There. At 3 minutes and 26 seconds, we've initialized both SWP-1s, set administrative passwords, static IPs, recognized them both in our network monitoring solution, and we thoroughly optimized them for Dante. Now, let's carry on and see how we fare with our off-the-shelf variety. By this point, you might have noticed the off-the-shelf solution is getting a more limited optimization. Features like IGMP snooping on most off-the-shelf switches are not compatible with the Macintosh computer, so we've generally told people not to engage that. I'll also point out that I've set up the Cisco switch a number of times. You'll notice I didn't need to refer to manuals or configuration guides. Most audio technicians won't be able to do it this fast. There, 10 minutes and 25 seconds. So even with somebody who's familiar with the switch, a reduced optimization target and no network monitoring solution yet, the off-the-shelf variety still took three times longer to set up than the SWP-1. And because the SWP-1 automated a lot of the IT drudgery, we're sure that that one is set up properly. So, okay, I get it. The SWP-1 is easier to set up. But is it a better network switch? Let's start by taking a look at the build quality. On most off-the-shelf network switches, you'll find blocks of connectors that are supported by the main circuit board. Now, if someone accidentally snags a cable and pulls on it, they're straining your main circuit board. Here, you'll notice the SWP-1 isolates the main board. The Neutrik, Ethercon, and OpticalCon connectors are mounted directly to the steel chassis. Now, if someone is hurrying and they get caught on a cable, the connector is supported by steel. Even the redundant power connections use locking cords. This will prevent accidental disconnects. Now, take a look inside this switch, and what don't you see? Or, more to the point, what don't you hear? 
There's no cooling fans in the SWP-1. This silent operation makes the SWP-1 more appropriate for studios, open control booths, and other critical listening spaces. Okay, so the SWP-1 is easier to set up, it has a rugged build quality, and it produces no ambient noise. Now, if your production environment also has a Macintosh computer, we're going to switch your traffic more efficiently for you. You might remember that we didn't ask the off-the-shelf switch to encompass all of the configuration we do with the SWP-1. One big feature that's missing is IGMP snooping. Now the SG300 certainly offers IGMP snooping, but it doesn't work very well with the Macintosh running OS X. And by the way, this is true of most off-the-shelf network switches, even those from well-respected brands. So, when people are using off-the-shelf switches, we usually recommend they leave snooping off until they have a need, and then we'll figure out what to do about that. Now to explain what IGMP snooping is, I've set up my Mac Mini, and we'll do a little demonstration. If we look in Dante Controller's Network Status tab, you'll see I have 5 megabits of traffic going from my CL console to this Mac. That's my recording microphone. We'll just ignore that for now. You can see there's no other audio floating around. We're starting from a blank slate. Now, on this system, I took the switches from our earlier configuration demo, and I've set them up on the two networks. The SWP1 switches are running the primary network, and the Cisco SG300s are running the secondary. Let me start by routing 32 channels of audio from a stage box to a console. As we look in the network status tab, we'll find 47 megabits of network traffic going from the stage box to the console. No big deal, that's what we'd expect. Now let me do this again. I'll take those same 32 channels and route it to another console. As we look back in the network status tab, we'll see the stage box is sending twice as much data. It had to send 47 megabits to one console and another 47 megabits to another console. Again, we expected this. Just for kicks, let's do this once more. Each time we send that audio someplace new, the stage box has to retransmit it all over again. Now you could imagine this transmitter would run out of resources eventually, right? And in fact, if we look back in Dante Controller, we can see it has a message for us in the event log. Here we go. Fan out configuration detected. Dante Controller is trying to tell us that we're not sending this audio in the most efficient way. Right now what we're doing is called unicast, and in a post office analogy, it's kind of like first class mail. Let's suppose I'm sending party invitations. Every time I send another invitation to a friend on my list, I have to put another envelope in my mailbox. That's the duplication in bandwidth that we've seen so far. Now Dante also supports a transmission method called multicast. Now multicast is more like a magazine subscription. The consoles wanting the mic inputs would request the streams from the network switches, just like subscribing to a magazine. The network switches confirm their subscription, and as the stream enters the network, the data is only sent to the subscribers who've asked for it. Now this approach will reduce the load on our transmitter as well as our trunk lines. Let's put this into practice. Let's open up a device view and go to the transmit tab for our stage box. You can see we're already using 24 of the 32 available flows on this device. If I click the multicast button at the top, I can assign channels to a multicast flow. Here, I'll just pick the first eight. Now if we look at our flow count, we'll see one multicast flow has replaced six unicast flows. Okay, let me fast forward through this as I set up the other 24 channels. Now we can see we've dramatically reduced the load on this box. Instead of using 24 unicast flows, we're only using four multicast flows. If we go back to the network status tab, you can see I'm only transmitting 42 megabits of data now. I've reduced my transmission by 100 megabits. Now you can see I'm still reaching all of my consoles, but look further down the list. You'll notice a difference between the primary and the secondary networks. The off-the-shelf switches with IGMP snooping disengaged have duplicated this traffic to every port on the network. This idea of multicast being like a magazine subscription, that's what IGMP snooping does. If your switch doesn't have it, or if it isn't engaged, then the switch doesn't have a list of who's interested in each multicast stream. In that case, it does the best it can in a backwards compatible way. It delivers the stream to every local port on the network. Now in our postal analogy, 
this lack of IGMP snooping turns our efficient magazine subscription model into junk mail. Every device on the network has to sort through all this overhead, find the messages it's interested in, and throw the rest away. And this is only 32 channels so far. Let's take it a step further. Typically, we'll take all our stage sources and set them to multicast. I'll fast forward as I set up my second Rio 3224D for multicast. Done. Now if we go back to the network status tab, we can see this second stage box is also putting 42 megabits of traffic on the network. Remember, the transmitting device doesn't maintain a list of people who are interested in the data, it just provides it to the network switch, and it's up to the network switch to get it to the right people. So, since the off-the-shelf network switch doesn't know who wants this traffic either, it's junk mailing all 84 megabits of traffic everywhere. However, the SWP1 efficiently trims the recipient list, knowing where the traffic is supposed to go. Now, just so you get an idea of the network load, what I'm showing you is 64 channels at 24-bit. Normally, we run this at 32-bit for the optimal sound quality. Now, if I look at my bandwidth, I can see 64 channels of junk mail grows to 108 megabits of audio. Now, in the early days of Dante, everything had a gigabit port on it. So we could handle a fair amount of junk mail, and it wasn't a big deal. But nowadays, people are wanting to integrate more bandwidth-restricted devices. Examples might be a Wi-Fi access point or a 100 megabit port from a control system, remote management of amplifiers, or even a Dante Ultimo device. This sort of traffic optimization is becoming critical and the SWP-1 ensures these devices will be able to join the network without compromises. So, the SWP-1 is easier to set up, it's ruggedly built, it makes no ambient noise, and because its IGMP snooping implementation is compatible with OS X, and there's a few of those machines around, the SWP-1 will switch your data more efficiently. Now there's one more major advantage I've got for you, and in some cases, this may be the most important of them all. When an off-the-shelf network switch is used, I see a lot of people treat the network like a mystical box that magically delivers data from one point to another. They don't know how it works, they're just glad it does. Now if something goes wrong, would they know how to troubleshoot that? Any uncertainty here just goes against the grain of people in the production world. We're a ruggedly independent bunch. We want to know that if a change is needed on the network, we can make it ourselves. If something breaks on the network, we can fix it ourselves. And frankly, we want to be able to spot a problem on the network before it affects our audio. That's what a production network looks like to me. In 2014, the Dante Controller 3.5 update brought useful diagnostics, but they could only offer statistics on the Dante network endpoints. With the SWP-1, we're able to show you useful information about the network switch itself in clear, understandable ways. Yamaha provides a free Windows software application called Yamaha Audio Network Monitor. As I launch the program, you'll see it automatically discovers devices in my system and populates them in a tree for me. If I click on a Dante device in the tree, I'll see some useful information about the Dante endpoint. I'll see how many transmit and receive flows I have, my sample rate, bit depth and latency. I can see both network ports are up and in redundant mode, and I'll see my port utilization and any network errors. A lot of this information is available in Dante Controller, but it's nice to have it all in one consolidated screen alongside your network information. And speaking of that, let's click on a network switch. In the port status tab, I can see at a glance these ports are running at one gigabit and these control ports are running 100 megabit. If I click on the Bandwidth tab, I can see how saturated any port is. Conveniently, this is shown in color-coded percentages, so you don't have to remember the negotiated port speed to know if a port is overloaded. Down here at the bottom, you'll see I have a list of all devices connected to the switch. We can give descriptive names to any of these devices, helping us differentiate between multiple instances of the same model or multiple communication functions that are present behind one network port. Now these diagnostics are great when you're setting up a show, commissioning a network, or troubleshooting a problem. But you're not going to sift through diagnostics when things are working as you'd expect. 
To that end, the Yamaha Audio Network Monitor offers a supervision function. In the upper right, you'll see three buttons, snapshots, notifications, and history. Once you have your network set up the way you want, just click snapshot. Now your network connections are being supervised for you. If a connection is lost anywhere on the network, you'll get red notifications in the top of the screen. Notice the messages use the names we gave our devices, so they're easier to read. But we can also search the network tree for the error symbols to find the problem. Here, I can navigate right down to the broken link in question. As the connection is restored, we'll see the error messages go away. So the notifications window acts as a hot list, identifying any currently unresolved issues. As we've seen, broken links will show up in red. But it's also nice that the system will show you new, unaccounted for links. So here's the switch I'm going to connect to. You'll see the system identify the new connection and give me alerts in blue. Now, if this was a device I wanted to add to my network, I could label it and click Snapshot to update my list of monitored devices. Or, let's suppose this is a laptop that a tech brought in. They're going to use it for Dante controller and virtual sound check. But the point is, it's not part of my critical infrastructure, and I don't want to get alerts every time the laptop comes and goes. For my sanity, I'll label what this is. Then, I'll uncheck the snapshot box for this port. My alert instantly goes away. And now, if I remove the computer from my network, I do not get an error message. Perfect. Now, notifications are helpful, but what if I wanted a list of issues after I fixed them? That's what the history button is for. This is your log showing you a complete record of all the notifications that have popped up. Once you've addressed the issues, you can decide to delete the history and start fresh. So, the SWP-1 is easier to set up, has a rugged build quality, and makes no ambient noise. It switches data more efficiently, offers insightful diagnostics to network performance, a supervisory function to notify you of any issues before they affect your audio, and the SWP-1 was purpose-built by experienced hardware engineers with a proven track record in Dante Networks. Put it all together, the SWP-1 is a rock-solid performer that will change the way you think about production networks. Thank you for joining us, and I welcome you to contact your local Yamaha dealer to experience the SWP-1 for yourself.